So SJ here from the Rehab Hub. I am a podiatrist and I'm going to talk to you here on this live about ingrown toenails. Possibly it's ingrown, possibly it's a fungal nail. So if you don't like yucky stuff, then switch away. If you have any questions as I go through this, please feel free to comment. Um, I think you need to authorise uh, whatever you're watching this uh, to be able to comment. But even if you're watching it in replay, please feel free to uh, message us over. So here we've got a picture of definitely an infected ingrown toenail. And you can see it's bilateral, it's both sides, it's the medial side and the lateral side of this particular patient's nail. And actually this was a uh, one that I fixed just last week and we worked on and helped the body fix it. So we can see there's been a bit of infection. This particular patient was uh, suffering with an ingrown toenail that uh, they had had for a number of years and had been off and on antibiotics and if you've watched any of my other uh, lives you will have uh, heard the chat about antibiotics we'll maybe go over a wee bit more about this um, later on but yes essentially infected and we can see from some of these other ones here uh, we've got an involuted toe which is the one on the right hand side to so see it's really curly and then you've got one that's ingrown really localized infection there as well on that kind of bulgy red part so you can see that kind of red swollen angry now in terms of what we can do for these for some people we can conservatively, conservatively treat them that means that we wouldn't need to do any surgery on it um, meaning that we'll talk a wee bit about the surgery during this presentation, so we'll kind of debunk some of that for you as well. But essentially, we wouldn't. Um, we don't always need to perform surgery to fix these. There's sometimes if we catch them early enough, we can tidy these up fairly, or kind of help you with them fairly easily. But depending on, so you can see the one in the right is a completely different shape to the one on the left hand side of your screen, and this really will. Um, impact on what type of procedure we would be able to perform. Now, not everybody um, gets an ingrown toenail. So you can see here again, localised um, infection. See, I don't know if you can see my little um, movement going on the screen here. You can see that red, hot, oh, swollen. We've got that kind of granulation tissue starting to build. So there's definitely something to get done with these. And usually, um, your GP or or likes would give you antibiotics and that definitely isn't the solution to this. Now, another reason that you might come and see us with nails is a fungus, uh, fungal nail infection. So this is what generally a fungal nail infection will look like. And sometimes we might do um, nail surgery on this to resolve um, ongoing, just absolutely nightmare fungal nails. Now, the one on the far left, we can see it's almost the full nail. And actually, this particular patient, I did uh, do surgery on this and we removed the nail fully to allow, she was demented with it for years. And so we did nail surgery on this. Uh, it had also been digging in and annoying her. She didn't have any infection, as you can see, but it was something, this particular patient was in her 50s and this had been going on since her 20s. And she just was like, she was done with it. She wanted it gone. And for this particular patient, we did finalise it. She didn't want the nail to grow back. She was um, at the end of her tether with it. It would get to a certain point. She'd be seeing podiatrists for, for years, like 30 years managing this, probably spent, I don't even want to imagine how much she'd spent over those 30 years getting this conservatively managed. So she came to me and we removed it fully and finalised it so it won't ever be a problem for it again. So there's different options depending on what you're looking for. The nail, however, to the right of that one is a wee bit different. You can see there's like a little line on it and that's where we've, we've no doubt been, um, we've drawn that one to show the line of, of demarcade where the, the infection, the fungus stops. And with a nail like that, that's actually a good candidate for um, what we do, the lacuna method in clinic, where we would drill into that fungus and treat the skin underneath. So that actually, I wouldn't uh, go to surgery for that. I would treat that conservatively, that fungal nail, uh, rather than taking the nail off because there's a good likelihood that if we treat the skin, the associated fungal infection, treat the footwear, make sure that everything is in the right environment for this particular, to make it, to get rid of the, the fungus and then treat the skin underneath that nail, then there's a good case that that actually will, will, will work really, really well for that patient because it's not right back into the matrix, so no need for surgery. However, if you look at the 
far bottom one, the bottom right corner, that is just, yeah, that needs to come off, doesn't it, if possible. So that is, it's like thickened, it'll probably be all crunchy and just like flaking and yeah, it's, it's just, that needs to be dealt with and it's probably quite sore, I would imagine as well. And they, they do tend, some of these kind of grow up the wheel, almost like a horn that can make it wearing shoes really uncomfortable. And then because they get so thickened, there's then a risk of, because of that pressure on the skin underneath, there's a risk of um, ulceration underneath those um, those nails. And that's something we can see in clinic where you've got older patients maybe where they've, uh, their nails, your nails do tend to get thicker as you get older. And fungal infections tends to be associated with people who are older as well. So what can happen is, is this build up of the nail and the pressure on that kind of skin over time, you know, they might not even feel pain if they've got peripheral neuropathy, they're maybe not feeling and have full sense um, on their feet. So they might not actually have pain. It might be that the, something's coming out of their nail or it just looks a bit funny. And then you, you, you're then, <clears throat> then treating that and then you, know, you, you find an ulcer underneath it. And that's, that's never a good thing at that point. So thickened nails should all always you want to file them down. You always want to keep them um, thinner because of that that build up of pressure and that pressure can then uh, basically damage the tissue underneath and leave you with a wound, and then it can then become that chronic wound that is then classified as an ulcer. So uh, it is important because then you're then dealing with something that that yeah that is pretty serious by that point. And um, well, this presentation isn't going into ulcerations, but it's, it's a serious thing. So we don't want to be leaving that sort of thing. So make sure that certainly if you've got uh, older relatives uh, that you are checking these kind of things. I know feet are not the most attractive things, but um, even if you just get into your local podiatry practice or somebody that will do DOMS if they're, they're not able to get out, uh, do do take the time to have somebody look and check these kind of things. These are the kind of things we're checking for. And just because somebody's not moaning about being in pain doesn't mean to say there isn't an issue there because they might not actually have uh, the sensory input there. They might not actually have um, the ability to feel pain. So um, yeah, always get that checked out. But that's another candidate for uh, nail surgery would be a fungal infection actually. And that's something that, that we treat. Right, we alluded to this in my last presentation. We spoke a little bit about antibiotics and the use of antibiotics uh, with an ingrown toenail. And I'm not saying they don't have their place. They of course have their place but they are not, they shouldn't be the first line unless there's an absolute reason that they need to be. And this is usually what people will go on, they've got an infection and they'll go on antibiotics and it's 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 not always necessary because it's like you're not taking away that problem. It's, and as I said in my last presentation, it's like I've, I've left a knife stuck in you, whether it be your toe or whatever, and I'm not going to take the knife out. I'm not going to take that big jaggy bit of nail out of your toe. I'm just going to leave it in there. Like if I just left this knife in there and I'll give you antibiotics to clear that infection, but I'm not going to remove the actual problem. And the problem is the knife, the nail that is stuck into the tissue. So the problem isn't the actual, um, the, the infection is there because there's a foreign body sticking into your tissue that's then allowing a portal of entry. It's allowing that infection to then happen. So we need to remove the nail, the knife, and and allow the body to heal itself and actually in the majority of these i mean to be honest in in my time doing these it's very rare for me to have to give somebody antibiotics to deal with this the body is very equipped if we just remove the problem the body is more than able to deal with the um, fit, active healthy people deal with the infection itself and if not we have the antibiotics there but it shouldn't be a first line thing let us remove the nail so when we're talking about nail surgery, what happens and it, nobody likes needles and things. So we do have to put the toe to sleep. We have to anesthetize the toe. We use local anesthetic as a really small needle, 30 gauge needle, really, really small. And we have two little jags, one on either side of the toe because we have to deal with uh, both of those nerves and it's two, it's two different branches um, of nerves. So that's why you get two injections, one either side. It is a wee bit stingy. That's probably how I would um, 
it's almost like maybe feeling like you've got vinegar in a little cup that's probably it's got a bit of a heat to it it's not horrendously painful but it is a wee bit stingy so it's not completely painless for kids we can use things like elma cream just to go over that initial scratchy sensation but usually when you've got somebody certainly a young one that has got a really horribly just sore toe right they are demented it's so sore it, the, these things really are sore when when they get infected and you know pus and things coming out of them you just want to get it get it dealt with so it's over with really really quickly it's a few seconds and then the toe won't feel anything right in terms of what happens we have different options so within the rehab hub in glasgow we are a team of podiatrists we are used to doing this in a if not daily weekly basis and we can do what's called a partial removal or we can do a full removal we can use phenol where we stop the nail growing back if you're wanting a more permanent solution or we may choose not to use phenol so in this particular image here this is a partial so you can see um what's happening here is we're going down the side so say for example that was the side that was causing the problem we would go down with our sterile instruments and we would remove the problem. So this is like we're removing that big bit of nail that's sticking into the tissue. So imagine what I spoke about earlier, that big knife that's sticking into the tissue that is causing the problem in the first place. We are basically removing that. So we need to numb your toe up before we do that. We then remove the problem. And then at this point, we've got a choice. We can choose to just allow the nail to grow back or we can, at this point, choose to put a solution on the nail, which is called phenol. And phenol burns the, the nail cells. So essentially, we are trying to ensure that you won't get this problem again. Now, with partial removals, which means we're only taking a slither of the nail out, the research, the body of research that, that is out there, and also from working within the NHS, what I can say is that the majority of patients that come back for a second surgery are patients that have had a partial. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it's it's generally, um, it's less effective than taking the full nail off and finalising it. But we appreciate that many people will want to keep hold of their nail. They don't want to not have a nail. Um, you don't need your nail. It doesn't, it, do, it really doesn't have any purpose at all on your feet. It's, it's there as it really doesn't do anything. So it's not going to cause you any disability. There's going to be no weird sensation if you don't have a nail on your, your big toe. And if you've got recurrent problems with that, that's a conversation that we'd have with you and get the best plan for you. But know that we can do uh, partials and we can do full removals. We can do removals where we don't put any phenol on it. Maybe there's just been trauma and it's just the, the situation with the trauma that's caused the problem in the first place. So we just want to, to deal with that and then let the nail grow back, hopefully, uh, as, 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 as new. Or there might be something that's ongoing with your particular shape of nail, some sort of damage you've had long term, that you need a more permanent solution. So there's different, everybody's different but know that we have those different options there. And you can see from this picture, we've got the, the little blue thing around the toes is a tourniquet. That's on because we need to stop the blood flow going in, and especially if we were going to be using phenol, we would want a tourniquet on because we don't want the blood to come down to essentially dilute the, the phenol solution uh, because that would make it less effective. So if you're trying to burn off those nail cells, we don't want the solution diluted, so blood would dilute that. And also it gives us better visual. It just means that we can see what we're doing. We can make sure everything's out. If you've got loads of blood coming down in an area, uh, it's it makes it uh, less difficult to be, it, it basically means your visibility there isn't, isn't great. So we usually will use tourniquets, but the, prim the primary reason we're using that is if we're phenolizing, we don't want the blood to dilute the phenol. So that's really uh, the main reason we use it. And then from here, you can see this is me actually removing one of my colleagues. Uh, this is me doing a surgery. And this was actually for a fungal nail. And I, I want you to just notice on that how wide that nail actually goes. Uh, and I think that's uh, most of my patients don't quite appreciate how wide your nail actually is. So that's what we need to take out. So when we are, um, if I jump through to that again, when we are removing that nail, if you imagine trying to get into that without 
uh, numbing your, your toe up. There's just no way. And you can see the green uh, tourniquet here that I've got on with this particular patient. And that's my artery forceps. I've already been up and cleared out before um, going up with the artery forceps to then get a nice clean uh, pull away from the nail bed to allow that nice clean um, removal of that nail. And that particular uh, surgery that I did we uh, we actually chose not to finalise this particular patient's nail because it was a fungal nail and then what we did was we allowed the nail to heal and at the same time as that we then treated the skin and the skin around the the toe with a fungal um, treatment so that and actually this particular patient's got a really lovely toe now which is toenail which is an ideal situation. So th there's different reasons for getting nail surgery. Usually it's infection and ingrown toenails, but not always. And I wanted to just make that clear. Sometimes having a fungal nail um, would be um, your indicator. The difficulty is, depending on your fungal nails, you might have all your all your nails might be fungal and that's maybe a bit uh, much to take them all off in one day. But it's not that we couldn't do it. We just probably wouldn't do that all in one day. That's maybe a bit much, but um, it can be done. When you're... Uh, leaving for surgery, this is usually what will happen. We'll usually um, put a primary dressing on, then a secondary dressing. Primary dressings with us, it, it just depends. We'll usually put on a bit of um, Ottoman to stop the dressing sticking. And then we might put something on. If, say, for example, when we've, we've maybe had some granulation tissue to cut away, there's maybe been some soft tissue work, scalpel work underneath that we've had to do. Um, and that can sometimes just mean that you end up with a bit of bleeding post-op bleeding so we will sometimes use um a, a kind of a dressing that will help with the bleeding control and then we would then put on some sterile gauze and then we would dress it up just with a basically a little dressing to hold it all in place and you usually leave that on for just 24 hours or sorry 40 hours usually 40 hours with that and then that dressing is then removed and then you would just it just goes to a stereo plaster after that until it scabs over um so that is it the nail surgery isn't um, it isn't just for ingrown toenails. So I wanted to get that across in this presentation, this live that I was doing with you. Uh, that's been something that people have asked us. We've had I've got a few phone calls this week about that. Like, why would I get nail surgery? Why wouldn't I? Nail surgery is, it's not, it certainly shouldn't be taken lightly. And it's not something that everybody will be able to get because uh, depending on your health status, uh, if your uh, blood supply to your lower limb isn't great or... There's various different reasons why we wouldn't be able to do it. Um, but for the vast majority of healthy uh, young people, uh, it's not a problem. Um, actually, a couple of patients I had last week were in their 50s and then also had a young girl, um, actually quite young. She was uh, 12, that particular patient, and just pff, absolutely, and I, like, just, it, it was, it's always tougher with the younger patients because the, probably the hardest bit is the injection but we were very patient um in 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 clinic and that particular patient took us a wee while to get an injection in but we got it in we got it resolved and it's <laughs> absolutely thrilled our mum and dad are absolutely delighted but it was yeah we we are i suppose what i'm trying to say is that we're we're very used to it and we're also very patient and um, if you know if we need to get you back and things with that particular uh, patient, we sent her out for a hot chocolate and just to kind of get herself psyched up and then come back in an hour and we, we did the procedure. That particular patient was just a wee bit nervous and we'd booked them in at a particular time and it just, it should just a bit too frightened to get the injection. So we gave it a wee bit of time and then she came back an hour later and, and, and had the procedure and everything was fine. So we're quite good at dealing with wee ones and we're very patient. So if that was a worry about you, um, we're, we're, we're generally always going to do our best to help as much as we can and make it a calm situation. And um, I mean, it's not nice. It's not nice for anybody. Uh, it's, it's never nice getting an injection, but we're very quick and we're very skilled at doing it. Um, we are the, the lower limb specialist podiatrists are the, I mean, there is nobody better to perform nail surgery than a podiatrist. 
Uh, it is something that that we are heavily trained in during um, our, our degree. It is something that we, we do daily. So it is don't put up with a big horrible sore toe. You don't always need surgery on it, but please don't worry if you do. We can absolutely help you, whether you're in Glasgow or whether you're further afield, look out for your local HCPC registered podiatrist. So if you go into the HCPC uh, register, which is the Healthcare Professional Council's register. So as, as podiatrists, we are healthcare professionals. We are regulated by the government. So you can find your local podiatrist by just going on to the HCPC uh, website and you'll be able to check, you'll be able to go into the podiatrist list and you'll be able to get a list of uh, local podiatrists. You can also get that from the Royal College of Podiatry and depending where you are in the UK, the you'll be able to do a search for your local HCPC registered podiatrist who'll be able to help you out with that if you're not in Glasgow. Um, but that's it. So... Nail surgery, not as scary as maybe you would think. It's something we can absolutely help you with. Usually appointments, you can we, we can usually see you. I mean, if it's an emergency, if we needed to see you the same day, we would generally try and fit you in. If not, usually within 24 hours, we would usually top and tail you at the, the start or the end of a clinic. Even if we were fully booked, we, um, we would see you just if there was infection there. That's not something we're going to mess about with. So we would generally see you, if not the same day, we would be able to see within 24 hours. So if you need any help, give us a call or with this video, um, there will be a link. If you're watching us in replay, feel free to comment. We like comments. Feel free to share this with anybody that you think is struggling. Um, and uh, yeah, give us, give us a little call if you need a hand.